today I'm gonna answer your questions. You know why? Cause you matter. You may not hear that enough or you may not believe that, but you do, you matter. And I wanna help you realize that you aren't just a person, you're a mother trucking unicorn. And unicorns don't bow down for anyone. So cut the crap and let's start loving ourselves. So today I'm gonna answer the very, very difficult question of how do I get more body positive? How do I get more confident in myself? How do I love myself more? This question was asked to me in a variety of different ways. Um, so I'm gonna try to answer it in one fell swoop, but I will say it's a hard question and my answer may not be your answer. Um, and I think that's an important things to note because I think a lot of times when people answer this, they're like, this is how you do it, blah, 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 blah. And the reality, that's what's worked for them. And we're humans, we're different. We're all gonna have different things that make us feel more comfortable and more confident in ourselves. And we're gonna have different challenges. Some are gonna suffer from depression. Some are gonna have better environments around them to support them in that change. So it's really circumstantial and it's really hard to give like a definite answer of how you can get there. But I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that work for me. Now I did create another video um, on what personally worked for me 100%. I am gonna link to that here somewhere. Somewhere on this video, there's a link. Click that if you wanna watch kind of my three things that I do on a regular basis and kind of progress through to help me value and love my body more. But I'm gonna talk just generally about self-worth because I think the conversation here uh, is less about our bodies and more about how do I find value in myself? Uh, and I think when you value yourself and you tr see what you're worth, uh, you don't allow other people to hurt that. And the first thing starts with recognizing who has the ability to affect your self-worth. Now, a lot of people will say to you, oh, no one should affect your self-worth. It's called self-worth because it's about you, et cetera, et cetera. It's not that simple because the family we have around us, the people we love, the people we hold close are going to affect how we see ourselves. If we hurt someone we love, we're going to feel bad. That's a good thing. That said, sometimes people choose to be hurt and there's a big difference between the two. You have to figure out what your morals are, what you value, so you can establish, am I hurting someone or are they choosing to be hurt? Figure out what you believe, what morally you think is right and wrong. I talk a lot about um, going out there and exercising a lot. And a lot of people say, I should not exercise uh, or show myself exercising as a plus size person because I'm encouraging other people that being overweight is okay. And morally, I think that we need more photos of women who are overweight exercising because I think it leads more overweight women to believe they can exercise and therefore lead healthier lifestyles. So those people who are upset about the fact that I am choosing to promote uh, my body exercising are choosing to be hurt, I'm not actually hurting them. The reason this is important is because when you do get hatred, which was a lot, another thing that a lot of people brought up, how do you deal with the hate? If you know your morals, if you know what you stand for, if you are proud of those things, it's very easy to rationalize out those comments. That person is choosing to be upset at me. I am not doing anything to make them upset. Therefore, they are the irrational person and I'm the rational person. So if you kind of know your values, it's really easy to say, hey, that's bullshit and I don't care. Um, on top of knowing your values, I think it's important to just do things. I know that sounds really simple. It's not a very exciting tagline, do things, but it is. Um, really a huge part of where my self-confidence has come from is just saying yes to new experiences. So. It might have been putting on a swimsuit for the first time. It might have been uh, going to an amusement park when I didn't know if I was gonna fit on the rides. It might have been um, traveling all over the world. I have a lot of people who ask me questions about how do you travel, how do you do these things? And the reality is I just kind of do them. I don't sit around 
uh, needling all of the reasons I can't. Instead, I focus on the fact that I'm going to do it and whatever uncomfortableness or awkwardness that might come out of the fact that I'm going to do it uh, is something I'm just going to have to deal with. And once you approach a situation with, I'm just gonna have to deal with whatever happens to me, you'd be surprised how many things uh, you're able to conquer and they're not as bad as you thought they would be because you've prepared yourself that there's gonna be some discomfort and I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, and I think that's, that's like the biggest thing I would say is like stop waiting for some sign that it's okay to do something, just do it. Uh, I'm actually gonna do something kind of crazy in a couple weeks. I'm gonna try rock climbing. I'm probably gonna be terrible. I know I'm probably gonna injure myself. I'm probably going to fall. I'm probably gonna go you at least 30 times because I'm getting that in. And I'm probably gonna have like an awkward conversation about the harness not fitting me correctly because I have a big butt. Like these are things I'm prepared for, but in my mind, I'm saying I'm just gonna do it anyway. I'm just gonna try. And the, the thing I found out is all of those things kind of work themselves out if you commit to doing it. So um, that would be the second thing I would say is just do it. Just find that thing that's that you feel scared of and just do it. Because once you've done it, you're like, ah, that was stupid. Why was I so upset about that? Um, the third thing I would say is uh, surround yourself with good people. I think you do have to know what you believe in and your morals before you can determine if someone's a good person or a bad person. But honestly, like, I have amazing friends and they make it really easy for me to know that I'm like worth something because they're constantly telling me and reinforcing me as a person. And I think that's, that's what a good friend does is reinforces who you are. So it becomes easier to be that person because you're comfortable. You know that there's not gonna be any awkwardness. I mean, as you get older, you begin to like cut out all the people that are, are, are Debbie Downers or I told you so type of people. So the people are like, I told you you shouldn't do that. No, no. You, you get rid of those and you get rid of the womp, womp, womps because they're not gonna make your life better and they are just sucking your energy out. And when you get that right group of people around you, you begin to feel free. And when you feel free, you begin to feel more comfortable trying things. So it's kind of like a circle. Know what you believe, make good friends, and then just kick some ass and do stuff. Just get out there, stop being afraid, and do it. Like, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You get turned away and they say, sorry, you can't do that because you're too chubby or too tall or too skinny or whatever it is that's holding you back. That's the worst that's gonna happen. Or someone makes fun of you. Like, yesterday I was in the park, right? And I was walking around playing Pokemon because I have an issue, whatever. And this child, like, pointed at me and was like, that lady's so big. And that was like the first time in public that I'd had, like, somebody say something to me. And I was like, oh, oh. And I was taken back. And I just turned to the child and I was like, yep, I'm big. And you're little. And he goes, I am and he turned around and left so the worst that's gonna happen is someone's gonna insult you and then all that's gonna result is you get a choice of how you deal with it in that case it was a kid and I was able to talk to him and be like listen kid here's some life-changing input into how you can talk to people that look different than you you might get the opportunity to teach in that position and not everybody's at that point where they're ready to teach in the best case scenario someone's gonna walk up to you and be like you're a badass, congratulations. Which has happened to me on several occasions for doing things that are fairly normal. Like, I walked around in a bikini at Barton Springs, which is a like freshwater pool in Austin, and this woman came up to me and she's like, thank you for being a role model to my daughter. And I turned to her and I was like, I'm not a role model to your daughter. Everyone should be able to wear a bikini. It's sad that like, we have, like me wearing a bikini is this like, low clap moment like it shouldn't be and she was like yeah you're right it shouldn't be and I was like exactly like wear that bikini and she was like oh I really I should and that's that's the thing you get sometimes that opportunity to teach um but in the worst case scenario someone's gonna make fun of you oh well like I I don't know I mean I know that's like maybe it's bone crushing for some people but like in the big scheme of life like what a 14 year old thinks about me, I don't care. Or what 
a person that hates fat people thinks about me, I don't really care. It just doesn't matter. And like, I've never been in a board meeting and someone goes, yeah, we have to discuss this contract, but just before we start, I wanted to make sure that everyone knew that this woman over here is fat. This never happened to me. Like, I just don't think, People with brains don't like go out and attack overweight people. It's not what they do. Frankly, they probably don't have enough time and they have enough of their own insecurities and problems to deal with. So those people you're worried about are the people that probably matter the least in your life. And the people that matter the most probably just want you to get over your phobia so you can be more fun. Because if you are that person that's constantly worried about how you look and where you can go and all of these things, then you're preventing the people around you from doing things or living life as boldly as they could. So I think in a lot of ways it's easier when you just accept your body because the people that are like shitty in your life, they're gone. And you're no longer preventing the awesome people in your life from doing things they want to do with you but aren't able to because you were like being a roadblocker. So that is a very long-winded answer to your questions but I guess at the end of the day uh, I would just say know what you believe in, find people that support your beliefs and just live. Just go out and live. That was my answer to the question. Thanks everybody. This is, you know, been kind of fun to just rant and talk about this. Hopefully it was helpful. I know it was a little bit like, because I get into it. Oh, I get focused. Uh, but I will be recording more videos. If you like what you hear, subscribe. Uh, and if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll be doing Q and A's uh, about twice a month, maybe? I don't know. Uh, and I just, yeah. I like actually hearing from you guys. I do read every comment. I just don't always have time to respond. Goodbye.